the world of global travel, airports worldwide have a few things in common. Busy terminals filled with passengers and busy runways welcoming a constant stream of incoming aircraft. A plethora of safety concerns exist when it comes to air travel and rubber buildup on the runway left by rapid acceleration of landing aircraft wheels are among the most important. This rubber buildup leads to decreased friction and when left uncleaned over time will prevent very slippery surface, particularly in wet conditions. Although a variety of methods are employed to remove these rubber deposits, none of them are more effective than the method of high pressure water blasting. In the global community of water blasting equipment manufacturers for runway rubber and airfield paint mark and removal, there are two very distinct methods in which the water blasting process is executed on the runway surface. The traditional method of movement is a lateral method of removal. With this method, a 10 inch wide cleaning head moves on a lateral mounted track across the front of the supporting vehicle as the vehicle moves slowly down the length of the runway. The backward movement of the blasting head attempts to directly correlate to the forward movement of the vehicle. However, here at Water Blasting Technologies, we have popularized a much different pattern of removal known as the linear method. With this method, the cleaning head or cleaning heads moved in a fixed position down the entire length of the runway in the exact same direction as aircraft land. Let's take a few minutes and consider the two methods, including the advantages and the limitations of each. Here you can clearly see the reality of each method. First, you can see the lateral method, which is moving a 10 inch blasting head in about a six and a half foot wide pattern. Secondly, you will see the linear method, which moves the entire length of the runway before turning around and coming back from the other direction. Now let's take a closer look at the lateral method of removal. Remember in this method, we have a 10 inch blasting head moving in a lateral pattern back and forth across the front of the vehicle as the vehicle moves linearly down the runway. This pattern leaves an overlap in between each of the corresponding tracks. According to our research, this overlap usually is two to four inches in width. If you do the math, an average rubberized area being about 2,000 feet in length, and the average overlap being about two inches in width, so if you take a 10 inch blasting head, reduce it by two inches, that means an effective blasting pattern of eight inches. You take the 2,000 foot long rubberized area, multiply it times 12 to get inches, and then divide it by eight. This means that for each linear pass of a lateral tracked machine, there are 3,000 of these lateral overlaps per linear pass. So consider this. As this 10 inch head moves to the left and then to the right, assuming a two inch overlap, that would be 0.16 square feet consumed in an overlap as the unit travels from left to right. If the blasting width is six and a half feet in the track, that would mean for every movement across, there's 1.08 square feet wasted due to this overlap. Assuming a runway is 2,000 feet long, there will be 3,000 such overlaps per linear pass of this tracking. If that's true, there's 3,256 square feet wasted per linear track. And since we've already discussed the fact that there are about 7.7 .7 linear passes on the runway, the lateral overlaps on an average end of a rubberized runway would result in a net wasted overlap area of 25,000 square feet. Now let's talk about linear passes. It is true that the lateral tracking machines have fewer linear passes to complete. In fact, a lateral tracking vehicle 
requires only 7.7 .7 or 8 passes per 50 foot wide area. However, as you'll notice, the lateral tracking vehicles leave a scalloped edge down the side and when it comes back to do the next pass, the points of these scallops are opposing one another. The vehicles move so slowly that they're difficult to steer at that speed and so it's necessary to take a much wider overlap and the minimum that we've ever seen possible is 8 inches. If you take 8 divided by 12 so we can calculate square feet, that results in a square footage of 0.67. If we multiply that 0.67 times the length of the rubberized area, which is 2,000 feet in length, this results in a net overlap per linear pass of 1,333 square feet. We take the 1,333 multiplied times 7.7 .7 linear passes necessary to cover the area results in a net loss of 10,256 square feet. If we then add the wasted overlap area caused by the lateral passes, 25,050 square feet, to the wasted area caused by the linear overlaps of 10,256 square feet, results in a net loss of overlaps of 35,306 square feet out of a possible 100,000 square foot area to be cleaned. This means that a lateral machine operating under these parameters would be only 65% efficient. Now let's take a closer look at the linear method of removal popularized by water blasting technologies. A few clever innovations have made this method far more efficient than the competitive method of lateral movement. First off, let's take a look at the blasting heads. In this setup, you'll notice two blasting heads instead of one, and a width of anywhere from 28 to 40 inches of removal width. In this particular case, we have two 21 inch blasting heads married together for a total of 42 inch blasting width. However, a two inch overlap is required. Notice the overlap is far less than the eight to 12 inches required by our lateral machine. How is this possible? First of all, the vehicle is traveling very quickly when compared to a lateral movement machine. Secondly, there are no scalloped edges left by the machine as it travels in a straight pattern. To make this truly understandable, you need to understand something about the blasting pattern and the circles in which the spray bars are moving in. There's jets all along the continuum of the spray bar, but the jets at the outer edge of the spray bar are traveling at a much faster speed than the nozzles on the inside of the spray bar. And what we do to mitigate the overlap is we put a diameter in the outer nozzles half the diameter of what they need to effectively clean the surface so that when the nozzles overlap in the middle, they're effectively cleaned only once, not twice. Therefore, as the machine travels, you'll see on the animation that the outer edges are only half cleaned, not fully cleaned. And when we overlap the second time, that area is fully cleaned, and the area of actual overlap is very, very minimal.